Today, the Indominus Rex will be resurrected from the dead and be tasked with the most dangerous challenge yet. After laying waste to most of the animals in Isla Nublar and proving herself the superior land predator, will she be able to survive one of the most dangerous islands of all time? In this episode, we will follow the Indominus's journey through different terrain and the monsters that hide within. Will she survive or will she die again? Coming up, Indominus Rex enters Peter Jackson in Skull Island. Yep, that's right, for this episode we are switching things up a little bit. In the past few episodes following this format, we have focused more on the horrors featured in the Monster vs. version of Skull Island. Today's Skull Island is arguably scarier. Some of the creatures are more horrifying, and it just so happens that this island has a better established lore. So, that said, sit back and get comfortable, because there's a lot going on to discuss on this island that may change the outcome of this simulation and a special surprise outcome or announcement at the end, so pay close attention. We'll resurrect our Indominus Rex and bring her back to life. Thanks to Beastopia's cutting-edge technology, we'll be able to regenerate her mutilated corpse and bring her back to the world of the living, keeping all her memories of the past up until this moment. Hopefully she learned a few lessons from her short time period out of her enclosure. Now she'll be sent back in time to Skull Island, the one featured in the film King Kong back in 2005. The year, however, will be 1933, shortly before the arrival of these guys. Very quickly, though, we'll see what this island is up against. Note that during the events of Jurassic World 2015, the Indominus Rex was not fully grown yet, at a little over 40 feet in length. Here on this island, what will serve her well is her high level of intelligence and problem solving. A very lethal bite with a jaw that can open very wide, thick hide and a skull that can withstand heavy impacts. Stealth-wise, this one is equipped with good vision, heat detection, ability to remove her own thermal signature, and blend into its environment using camouflage. A side effect of being this smart is curiosity, which of course leads us to the first part of this simulation, the scouting phase. The Indominus Rex, after learning in her previous life that not all animals are harmless hadrosaurs and lesser life forms, she'll likely think twice once she steps onto an island where the soil itself is fertilized by the countless corpses that fall upon it each second. Yeah, a bit of lore for you. This island used to be a lot bigger and is currently sinking. Meaning that over time, all animals end up living closer together, confrontations more frequent, subsequently instigating an evolutionary arms race that brings forth horrendous life forms, diseases, and death. The air here is stale, not a single life form is safe, and Indominus here is about to find that out. In this scenario, the Indominus was released in the jungles. Now, our Indom does have experience being in a similar environment before, and will know that it's better to see your opponents first before they see you. Here, she'll adjust her body temperature and camouflage into the environment to practically be invisible. The soft pads on her feet, courtesy of the T-Rex DNA, silence her movements slightly, but will this be enough? To our knowledge, there isn't another animal here that will rival the Indominus stealth-wise and size-wise. However, she's not the only ambush specialist here. Some of these do rival the Indominus in size, which may cause some issues. For instance, there's a particularly vicious predator around here known as Carver or Carocarpter Interfector. These Gorgonopsid-like butchers are strong and dexterous, meaning that they are really good at using their hands and forelimbs. These aren't as big as our Indominus Rex, measuring at a maximum of 33 feet, but these are usually found in pairs, meaning that these can be a real issue in a two-prong attack. Getting ambushed by these guys is possible thanks to their exceptional sense of smell. However, being practically invisible to the eye and thermal sensors, Indominus may be able to quickly dispatch one of these first, leaving the remaining widow or widower to run and cut its losses. A few Fetodons will certainly attack anything that moves in front of it, but measuring around half of the length of this Indominus means that our Indom doesn't just have the upper hand in size, but also in strength. In the jungle of Skull Island, we do find more animals that are difficult, but not impossible to handle for the Indominus. A quick rundown includes Diablosaurus, 
The Asperodorsus, a sauropod nowhere near as large as the larger Apatosaurus from Nublar, Silvaceratops, and Atacurosaurus. All animals that very much resemble creatures that the Indominus Rex would have already faced. Against these animals, the Indom would still put out a win without suffering a fatal injury, but the dense forest would prove too troublesome. Hearing the sounds of larger dinosaurs, something familiar to her, she'd continue to the lowlands, but would have to pass through some other types of terrain first. While the Indom could easily navigate through the jungles and riverways of Skull Island, her size and base template species would compel her to take up territory similar to what T-Rex did. Though she is curious to see what's going on up on the highlands, the troublesome terrain up here wouldn't really be worth the squeeze. The slopes are way too steep to easily navigate, and the lack of appealing prey would make this area more trouble than it's worth. This decision to avoid this area would make it unlikely to bump into the king of the island, for now, nor the threats in the caves like the giant Terrapus Mordax Queen and her flying horde. The smell of rotting flesh might nudge her to a certain type of gorge, but these steep walls of the pit and the lack of visible animals would likely make it a very costly venture to go down, and might even end up saving her life since a bad fall coupled by getting swarmed by these bugs from hell might be too much for this hybrid. The Indominus does know to avoid unnecessary danger. If we saw the Indom not take the risk to go down this cliff or continue to take damage from an unknown weapon, she's not dumb enough to end up down here anyways. But in an area like this, well... <laughs> It's about time our Indominus got thirsty. All this moving around and taking on vicious jungle predators in the hot jungle made her search out for a sip of water. Unfortunately for many creatures on this island, going on a water break here marked the end of their miserable lives. There are many creatures living in these waters. Being human-sized meant you had it all the more difficult dealing with detestful flesh-eating neopedes, an entire aquarium catalog of fish from hell, to insane blood-sucking worms capable of draining a human dry. An Indominus, however, would be a bit too large for any of these threats to cause any real trouble. Even the large 20-foot Malamagnus would fall prey to animals like the V-Rex and add to the fact that these were mostly herbivorous creatures. So, what else could cause trouble to this hybrid who is technically still a noob to Skull Island? Undoubtedly hanging around here too long and after taking a few sips of water, she'd run into one of her first major obstacles. The Piranodon, a lethal mouthful of needle-like teeth weighing anywhere between 6 to 14 tons. With adult females measuring up to 50 feet in length, an aquatic creature again. This is a fish like no other, a literal sea serpent evolved to torment thirsty lesser life forms in the island. And she'll most definitely attack the Indominus if she gets too close to the rivers or swamps they dwell in. Assuming that this Indominus did get ambushed, her extra thick hide and resistant skull would be able to survive the initial attack, inflicting a very nasty wound if the first strike was at the belly, neck, or leg. If the fight continued in the water, the best bet the Indominus would have would be to use her intelligence to take the fight somewhere she has the advantage, using her strong arms and legs to shred into the body of the fish and escaping to shallower water. This will secure a win against a fish that is not that much bigger than an Indominus, but this could go completely the other way around if the Indominus caught a beached Piranodon in the middle of a spa session. Yes, they occasionally beach themselves to rid their bodies of parasites, but with a new predator popping out of nowhere, the much faster and dexterous Indominus would turn the powerful Piranodon into shredded sashimi. The Indominus will likely choose not to stay in this environment. The murky waters and the assurance that taking another sip in this swamp will draw in another sea serpent, she would best leave these waterways as fast as possible and search for easier prey. Indominus Rex so far has the odds in her favor of surviving this place, but she hasn't really had a real challenge yet. As she draws close to the open areas of the lowlands, the Indom will finally have time to rest and recuperate near things that look very familiar. Sauropods, Hadrosaurs, Ceratopsians, things that are not that dissimilar from those in Isla Nublar. She now has many different potential prey animals to fill her belly, or hunt for sport. These planes have too many animals to discuss one by one, but in this episode we'll talk about the ones that will pose a considerable threat for the Indom, prey and rival predator alike. The Ferrucatus. 
Length 34 feet, height 16, weighing at an estimated maximum of 16 tons. Weapons include powerful jaws, sharp beak, blunted backs, and numerous frill horns. Need we say more? Skull Island's answer to Triceratops wasn't that much different in size from the Cretaceous ancestor. While its horns were not ideal against theropods such as that of Triceratops, this species could leverage the array of spines that it had on its face and a signature powerful bite Ceratopsians had. The Indominus would have to fight smart to avoid getting gored or overwhelmed by these herding animals. Going for the younger individuals and snagging them would get itself overwhelmed by an army of angry adults. So, using its superior senses and stealth abilities can be enough to take down an adult, still at a considerable risk. Over time, an intelligent creature like the Indom would develop strategies to take these down with less risk every time. But this isn't the only source of food. Better prey does exist. The Ligocristus These hadrosaurs are very similar to the ones in Isla Sorna in terms of both size and habits. Unlike the ones that existed in the fossil record, these animals are borderline defenseless and much smaller than the giants like 16-ton Parasaurolophus or the 20-ton Shantungasaurus. Catching up to them will be hard, but she has shown to be really fast when she wants to. This dinosaur and those other animals as defenseless as this one are the type to be killed for sport. Like the case with the Apatosaurus in the Isla Nublar incident, their Skull Island counterparts are a different story. Brontosaurus, length 80 to 120 feet, height 40, estimated weight 70 to 90 tons. Weapons, huge size, crushing tail, trampling, and herding behavior. While the Indom utterly slaughtered many of the sauropods in Jurassic World, Brontosaurus Baxteri from Skull Island tips the scales with their behavior and sheer size. The Ingen Apatosaurus are many times lighter than the robust, longer, and taller Brontosaurus. Using the square cube law, the largest Brontosaurus could exceed 85 tons. That's even heavier than the Brachiosaurus from Jurassic Park. And unlike InGen stock, which were cared for in captivity and had very close to never faced a predator in years, these Brontosaurus would be growing up in the most predator-heavy environments imaginable without going extinct, either by fighting back or even the mere act of fleeing. The latter method, ironically, would end up being the most deadly. Once this herd is spooked into a stampede, a mini-extinction event is bound to occur. If there's one animal that can teach how to kill an innumerable amount of animals in minutes, it's this one. The Natural History companion book World of Kong – A Natural History of Skull Island clarifies that not even a V-Rex would pick a fight with a Brontosaurus. Their stampedes could potentially span many miles, killing any unfortunate creatures that happen to be in the way, both the innocent and the instigators. Fortunately, the Indominus's fast running speeds would be enough to get it out of the way in time. And in the act of spooking them, they end up killing more Apatosaurus and other creatures than she initially imagined. All this commotion, bellowing sounds of injured animals, and the smell of blood and guts splattered over the floor attracts what may be the Indominus's biggest nightmare. Vestatosaurus Rex Length 50 feet, height 20, weight at an estimated 20 tons. Weapons, massive jaws, bludgeoning skull, broad tail. Drawn to the smell of blood and often stealing kills from their own kin and other predators, it would be inevitable that an Indominus will find herself confronted by the largest predator on the island. And the most powerful theropod dinosaur to exist in this universe. Prime hunting ground like this would almost certainly already be claimed by a V-Rex. So, how would this play out at this point in time? Note that at the point of her death, the Indominus was not fully grown. Resurrected, she is now a little more than 40 feet in length, still 10 feet shorter than a robust V-Rex. Given the V-Rex did descend from T-Rex, it is possible that the hybrid might try to communicate with this being that looks like her, but this wouldn't be successful. 65 million years is a lot of time for verbal language to change, and the V-Rex are extremely aggressive towards outsiders on their territory. Against a fully grown V-Rex, things don't really look that good. It's important to note here that even if the Indominus is agile in her own right, these V-Rexes are not far behind. In fact, they may be on equal footing. Coming from the massively agile T-Rex lineage, these animals' bone structure allows this creature to bend and turn in ways its ancestor couldn't. Not to mention its huge noggin with a bite that could snap off entire limbs. 
And if the Indominus ever comes across one of these three, the other two will also pull up on her. The best chance the Indominus has to win this confrontation, if at all, would be to rely mostly on her stealth abilities. But even then, killing one V-Rex quickly will be challenging. And if she fails for the first time in her life, she'll be the one being hunted. It would be the first time she would ever encounter another land predator larger than herself, and frankly, her first humbling experience that she may be able to walk away from. If she survives long enough, she may come back for a rematch whenever she comes of age. If she were to thrive in the open lowlands of Skull Island, she would have to find an area claimed by a lesser predator, a smaller V-Rex. Here, things may look a bit more favorable, but there's another familiar scent lurking in the air. One that may shift the dynamics of this island and one day establish her as queen. So far, the Indominus has fared fairly well in the jungle and lowlands as long as she stayed out of trouble. Being in these two environments would also lead to confrontations against one of the smartest predators of the island, Venatosaurus. Now, there are two varieties of these here. One being the smaller variety, Venatosaurus impavidus, which are nocturnal and will likely just keep their distance from the Indom, and the more troublesome type, Venatosaurus saviticus, the crafty bastards we saw in the 2005 film. These were around the size of a Utah Raptor or Indoraptor, very intelligent and capable of cleverly navigating through any territory, and smart enough to trigger Brontosaurus stampedes to do the killing for them. Interesting dynamic interactions are seen between two intelligent animals. And in this case, if the Indominus ever runs into a group of these, two things may happen. One, a solid pack of Venatosaurus is no stranger to standing up to a single V-Rex, so a slightly smaller animal will be no different. While these are raptors, they are a different species very far removed from anything Jurassic World cooked up. So, how would these communicate? There is an alternative. The Natural History book mentions that this kind of raptor chiefly communicates with body language, and a perceptive Indominus will observe and learn to break a language barrier in a very short time. Venatosaurus are led by an alpha pair, and the easiest way to prevent a conflict against yet another predator is to convince them that she herself is a valuable ally, either by gifting kills or assisting the pack in a standoff against a V-Rex, slowly but surely proving herself invaluable and eventually taking control of the pack. At this point, it is imperative for the Indominus Rex to settle down, since for the entirety of the simulation so far, she'd been met with endless obstacles. Here, she has her best chance, and she'd best take it. Taking control of the pack by force would either cause them to disperse or gang up on her, similar to how she didn't kill Blue when assuming leadership of the squad. Yes, the Indominus can be prone to moments of mania and craziness, but she is a cognizant animal. She can act collected if she wants to. In turn, the Venatosaurus are smart enough to take advantage of a beneficial situation, the result being a brand new pack structure with the pack itself acting as a backup to the Indominus, now tilting the odds in confrontations against the other two monarch species in Skull Island. And that's with her not being fully grown yet. A pack like this has even shown up in the Kong lore before, in Joseph DeVito's canonical prequel universe to the original 1933 film. The raptor species called Death Runners were led by a gigantic raptor-like dinosaur called Gaw, who looked similar to the Indominus in some ways. This force, unlike anything this island has ever seen, will now be strong enough to establish a territory, taking down a single V-Rex and now taking over its territory, repelling the others with strength in numbers. Indominus is now one step closer to not only surviving here, but taking over. One day, the Indominus takes a deep breath but picks up another familiar scent, one which brings back dark memories and triggers her thirst for blood. Indominus Rex absolutely hates humans. She wouldn't have gone out of her way to ambush and kill them at every opportunity she got if she didn't. So, upon discovering the wall, she would waste no time trying to get around and getting at the humans. Here, these guys aren't armed with rifles, 50s, or RPGs. Compared to Jurassic Park's asset containment units, these guys armed with sharp sticks and clubs wouldn't stand a chance. They do have the upper hand in one thing, though. Note that in this scenario, the Indominus really wouldn't be able to get into the village because, hilarious as this is to say, the wall in this primitive setting has better security than Jurassic World. Why? 
because they had the sense to have a moat around the wall with a sheer drop at the bottom. This may have just been clever placement of the village. Now, this wall could be breached by an especially motivated Kong with superb leaping abilities, something the Indom can't do, but the raptors could have an easier time trying to somehow cross if motivated enough. But this wouldn't come across more than just harassing the village walls. To their perspective, the Indominus would be like nothing they had ever encountered before. She looks like the type of dinosaurs they are most scared of, but more intelligent, leads an army of raptor packs, and can seemingly disappear in plain sight, and clearly hates them just for existing. To them, the Indominus Rex is a demon. And what do scared people with faith do when they are confronted with a demon? They ask their god for help. King Kong, height 25 feet, weight approximately 20 tons. Abilities, dexterous hands and feet, climbing, powerful jaws, potential tool use, high pain tolerance. Despite being one of the smallest cinematic versions of the eighth wonder of the world, the 2005 King Kong still weighs more than the Indominus due to mammals having higher body density than dinosaurs. In general, the ape is taller, heavier, and somewhat physically stronger, and has additional assets such as better vertical maneuverability and tool use. This entire time, the Indominus Rex has wandered, cautiously avoiding threats, survived, and prevailed. And in the process, becoming the wielder of the most deadly force on this island. Now that she commands a Venatosaurus army and is fully grown, her war waged with the natives of this island climaxed to the face-off that will change the fate of this island for some time to come. It has all led to this.